Hello, I'm Ryan. No, yeah, one more time. Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and these are my impressions of the new Honda Rebel. Bam. Now we'll do that so that the the flip on the camera will match the turn of the GoPro head when we come around to it. Let's do it one more time. There we go. Hi, I'm Ryan F9, and these are my impressions of the new Honda Rebel. And there it is, staring right at me as it would be because this bike was built for people like me, Generation Y. See, I'm style conscious, but my tastes also change every five minutes. And I want performance because that seems like an authentic thing to want. And I also need all this for around $6,000 because I don't have much money to spend. You know, craft coffee and beard oil is expensive, so hey. I need this cheap. And it's hard to make uh, bikes, motorcycles for Generation Y, uh, but Honda's tried to pull it off here. Have they succeeded? Well, sort of. I mean, it looks like a standard cruiser-ish, although the really fat tires are sort of bratty. And then back here, they're basically begging me to screw my nice clean jacket, take out four bolts, and remove the whole rear fender. In which case it basically becomes like a bobber. I have a style for each of my moods. Also, is this a stylish bike or is this a bike that looks like it's trying to be stylish? You see what I mean? I can sort of see the puppeteer's hands behind the curtain. And nobody really wants to see Honda's hands. Anyway, what about my performance? Well, this is the Rebel 500. I mean, it has a parallel twin uh, from a CBR 500R and that is good. It is good to about the tune of 45-ish horsepower, and that's important for the highway. And this comes in the Rebel 300 as well, but it's too slow, it's too vibrational, and you want this one with the power in it. I had to pick this bike up in Toronto. I'm somewhere between Toronto and Montreal right now, and that alone was enough reason to choose the 500, and I did that trip once. You know, if you were buying this bike and say you were going to be on the highway maybe twice, or three times even, I would definitely get the Rebel 500. Forget the 300. You know, it's too vibrational. Uh, it's too slow, basically. As you can probably tell, I don't see this bike through rose-colored glasses. You know, a lot of us, when we first swung a leg over a motorcycle, it was a Rebel 250. You know, the old one that had a legendary 32-year production run. I don't care about that. I don't have that nostalgia. I can just see this bike for what it is. I can look at it and see the parts that look a little bit cheap. Plastic. Plastic. And the parts that just are cheap. And you know, this exhaust here has a couple rust spots on it. And this is a press bike that's about 100 kilometers old. It's brand new. Anyway, let's go for a ride here. Key on. So right off the bat, we can talk about how this thing powers itself. As I mentioned, it has the engine from a CBR 500R, and so it spools up and revs up really quick. I'll kind of wait till I get out of town here. Ah, let's clunk you down. We'll see what you sound like. You see what I mean? It's kind of got that sport bike whine and it spools up so fast and that's sort of exciting. And at the same time, Honda detuned the engine in here, or not detuned, but retuned it actually to make more power and more torque in the first half of the rev range. So it actually feels meatier down low. Um, you'd kind of swear you were on a leader bike and maybe up until 5,000 RPM or so. It's really throaty and kind of mm, oh, mm, oh. It's a mean bike. All right, I'll show you how it kind of revs up here. Oh. So it's got that exhilaration of a sport bike spooling up fast. At the same time though, uh, they ditched a couple teeth off the rear sprocket or a tooth or something like that. So it's not as jumpy as the CBR 500R. So I think this is still plenty fine for beginners. Um, you're not gonna kill yourself on here. It's, it's fun enough if you sort of slam the throttle, right? Like if you give it, uh, it'll get there. And once it spools up, it'll really get going. But it's not jumpy like a weightier big cruiser would be or like a sport bike would be. So the twitches of a beginner's hand like this, uh, they're not gonna kill you. Nothing crazy is going on there. This helmet is so loud for a touring helmet. It's ridiculous. I mean, talk a little bit about handling now. The pullback on the bars is quite minimal, so I'm leaned forward here in my body triangle. The foot pegs as well, they're not crazy foot forward like some cruisers, and instead they're pretty much right under me. You know, this bike's like an optical illusion. It looks like a cruiser, but it feels more like a standard motorcycle to ride. It really is basically a standard motorcycle. 
even the wheels, it doesn't even have an 18 inch big wheel up front anymore. It has twin 16s, which is very different from the old Rebel. And that means it's quite flickable. You know, this bike feels flickable. Your body position wants to do it and the bike is happy to oblige. So it handles well. You know, the pegs too, I mean, they'll lean about four degrees further than the old Rebel before they start scraping asphalt. The one big bummer about handling on this thing is the suspension. It is comically soft. Um, I had a six-year-old on here who could pretty much bottom out the forks. I can pretty much bottom out the forks just by doing this. They are so soft, way undersprung, way underdamped. If you take a hard corner on semi-crap pavement, you're just getting bounced and bucked all over the place. It's ludicrous. The shitty thing too is that I can't fix it. Uh, the forks are not adjustable and the rear shock is only adjustable for preload, so I can't fix it. Short of a big job, I just have to deal with the ridiculously soft suspension on this bike. I talk a little bit about how this thing handles on the highway. That's the other reason that the 500, I think, is way a better bike to get than the 300, is that it weighs more. Now, it's 408 pounds. It's still not super heavy for a beginner or something, but on the highway, that extra weight makes it more planted. It makes it less vibrational, and that's a big deal. It's actually very comfortable to ride on the highway in terms of power. There are a couple bummers for highway use, though. One is the seat. Um, they kept it low, 27 inches, which my head understands because it's a beginner bike. Um, they also made it really narrow where it meets the tank, and again, I understand that because it makes for a very easy reach to the ground. Now, again, we had like a four foot tall six year old on here and he could pretty much touch tippy toe. Um, so it's very accessible that way. My head gets it, but my ass is pissed because they cheated. Instead of just making a bike with a low seat, they designed a kind of a regular bike and then put a paper thin cushion on it to keep that seat low. Mmm, I don't like that. Now the other weird thing on the highway is the vibrations. Um, they're not as bad as I initially expected. This bike has six gears where the old Rebel was at, well, A, it was 250 and B, it only had five gears, way buzzier. This one's not that buzzy, except at 100 kilometers an hour. This weird thing happens where, well, I shouldn't really be doing this here, but get it up to 100. Oh, it's really shaking now, you know? And that's weird. Um, it gets a lot better around 120. It sort of planes out again and the vibrations aren't so bad. But if you're someone who likes to obey the speed limit, no train. Oh, yeah, like that just bottomed out the shocks. Um, if you're somebody who likes to obey the speed limit, then it's annoying that the bike is most vibrational at 100 kilometers an hour, which is sort of the speed limit on most highways. It's super nice out here. Um, if we talk about living with this motorcycle, there's a couple little quirks to get used to. Um, it takes an Allen key to take the seat off, which is annoying if you keep your Allen keys under the seat, per se. Um, the levers aren't adjustable, really, other than playing with the cables, and so that would sort of be annoying in the long term. Uh, what else? The clutch pull is really light, but the gearbox is sort of maybe not what you'd expect from a Honda. Um, it's finicky. Oftentimes when I'm clicking down, from second and then into first. Well, that time it wasn't a problem, but a lot of the times when I'm coming up to a stop sign and I click from second to first, it's really easy to find neutral. In fact, yeah, there it did. It'll just click into neutral. And then when this happens, I find it really hard to find first again. I'm sort of stomping on the lever, stomp, 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 and it takes a lot of clicks. Come on, baby. There we go, until I eventually get back into first. Uh, same with this thing. Um, so the, the horn, and the indicator lights are switched versus most motorcycles. So a lot of the time when I'm just going to put on my turn signal, I end up honking at people I shouldn't be. And uh, that causes a little bit of confusion. Bonus round. Oh, sorry. Nope. Uh, sorry. Oops. Shit. Sorry. Shit. Sorry. Shit. Shit. Sorry. Damn. Now as beautiful as the view is, stopping this motorcycle was not an enjoyable experience. See, Honda put only a single disc up front, and they mounted a bottle cap or something on the rear. Not a ton of stopping power. The ABS is exceptional though, it works great and they're undercharging for it. Only 200 bucks in Canada. That is ridiculous.
but not as ridiculous as this is. That's another thing about this bike, you know, you hop on it and it feels like home right away. It's just like comfortable, right away you kind of have an understanding for the way it moves. The Honda's good at that, they're great at making motorcycles that feel homey. Uh, I said this, I said that, I said that. Conclusion, what was I talking about? Uh, Honda's pipe dream. For this motorcycle is that the MSF buys a thousand for learners and then all the learners each buy their own because they loved it so much. And then 10 years down the road, since it's so customizable, they're still buying Honda Genuine accessories for their old lovable Rebel, even though they're probably onto bigger and better motorcycles at that point. That's the dream. Whether or not it's gonna work out, it probably will. It's a really special bike. I actually loved it. The 300's probably crap, but this one, I think it's gonna work out for Honda. All right. I don't know if any of that's gonna be usable. You could probably just end it on the GoPro, but whatever.